Hello, this is Stuart Bray back here for the third and final part in this series looking at making a mould using fibreglass and silicon. Now, where we left off last time, we had the mould um, uh, pretty much glassed, all the fibreglassing was done, and there was just basically a load of clay on the front of the face. Um, and now what's going to happen is I'm going to open up the fibreglass by basically prying it apart using a big screwdriver. Um, and the front half comes away pretty easy. Um, I'm going to leave the back half attached. If you recall, the back half is actually directly fiberglassed onto the plaster because there's no detail on the back. So I figured to save on silicon, the back half is all in uh, in fiberglass. So I, I pull apart the uh, the two front halves, and uh, what I'm going to do is push uh, uh, this uh, scraper. I've got like a plastic scraper into the clay to scrape out as much clay as possible. You can also use like wooden spatulas or a, a wire loop tool or something to scrape the clay out. And basically. You just want to scrape out as much as you possibly can. Um, I love to use this tool I've got. This is like a potter's loop tool. Um, it has a very short handle and it's it's nice and easy. It's quite, quite strong so it doesn't bend. Um, and it does a great job of scooping out tubes of clay uh, without, without scratching the inside up too much. Um, so once you've scooped out all the clay you can with the tools, um, what you want to do is just kind of uh, pack it all together onto the bench into a, into a block like this. And what this is going to do, this is going to inform me as to the volume uh, inside approximate volume of the inside of the of the fiberglass uh, mold because I'm going to fill this with silicon I may need to know how much silicon to mix so um, by keeping this block uh, of clay and measuring it I can work out the volume of silicon I'm going to need to get it completely spotless you want to try and take a, a bathtub or preferably rinse it outside with lots and lots of water and just rinse it out and scrub it using either a cut down chip brush or some kind of scrubbing brush just to wash it all out so once they're all clean and you've uh, dried them out, you want to put the halves together. Um, and what I'm going to do is here you can see here by putting half of the front on, you can see the space where the clay had been. And now this is a void, a space, and this void is where the silicon is going to go. And it's going to create a perfect uh, reproduction of the plaster head. So before we can assemble the mold and, and pour it through, we just need to prep the jacket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, little dots with a sharpie marker around uh, the outside of the keys and at regular intervals all over the surface um, and I'm going to basically drill holes through here with the drill uh, and these are going to create little bleed holes to allow the air to escape so as we fill it with silicon uh, the air that was in there will have somewhere to go. So once all the holes are drilled, we need to fit a length of tube to the jacket to allow some silicon to get in the mould. Now I'm using a plastic waste pipe from a plumber supplies, um, and you want to use something like this, but it needs to be about sort of, preferably sort of an inch and a half, two inches in diameter at least. Um, this silicon is a thick liquid, so it won't flow into the mould through the tube if it's too thin. As the mould surface here near the face, it's in an angle, so the easiest thing for me to do is to correct this angle, is to offer the tubing up to it, holding the tube upright, and just mark the angle here uh, with a pen. I'm just going to hold it in a vise, and then using a hacksaw, I can just cut straight through on that line. And then you offer the pipe up, and you should be pretty close. You can see now how this pipe is actually sitting at the right angle on the face to stay upright. And what I'm going to do is drill around this with a pen, and just mark a little section off uh, that I'm going to cut out. Drill a series of holes going around the outside of this circle that I've drawn. Um, and eventually the holes will join up and you can pop the disc out. So this leaves quite a jagged kind of edge. I'm just going to clean this edge up uh, using a little file or if you have some sandpaper or an abrasive paper or anything like that, that will work. Obviously if you have a hole cutter or a tank cutter to cut this hole, um, then that makes life a lot easier. Now I'm going to use a hot glue gun to uh, temporarily attach this tubing uh, to the hole that I've drilled. And by having a plastic cut like this, what I can do is draw around uh, on the inside here. I'm just drawing the circle shape of the tubing through the plastic tubing. And I'm going to cut that out and then I can hot glue that onto the top of the pipe. And if there's plenty of hot glue on there, it'll stay well secured. And basically it just means that when I fill up the mold with silicon, I've got a big receptacle at the top that will sort of contain a lot of silicon. So I'm not just pouring down with a tiny little tube. Um, I've actually got quite a big cup at the top to kind of hold a... The, the, the silicon and it just makes it easier to pour without spilling it everywhere. So finally once all this is cooled down and my uh, pour tube and everything is done I need to assemble the mold and in order to, to keep the mold sections firmly together I'm going to use bolts with uh, hexagonal heads 
and this allows me to use a driver drill to tighten them all up quickly. It's very important that you try not to trap your fingers when you're using a drill to tighten. You can usually set the torque on a drill to help avoid that kind of injury. So the back piece of the fiberglass, as we know, is already screwed to the baseboard. I haven't taken those screws out, but I'm also going to now screw down the front halves um, just to make sure that they're secure. This just means that the whole thing is well secured on the board and it minimizes any leaks that could creep out from under there. And once that's done, what I'm going to do is hot glue all around the base and all around every seam just to prevent leaks. So I'm going to measure out my five kilos of silicon. Um, and the reason I know it's five kilos of silicon is if you recall, we kept all the clay that we pulled out of the mold and I pounded it into a block and I measured it to uh, estimate the volume. So um, I'm mixing up uh, five kilos of silicon um, and my 10% of catalyst, which I'm going to add. And I'm going slightly under 10%, I'm going about 8% catalyst. I'm using less because it's a very warm day uh, on the day that I'm pouring this. And so in order to give me plenty of time to mix this thoroughly and get it into the mold, um, I figured if I just drop my catalyst a little bit, it will take slightly longer to go off. So it gives me more working time. So the catalyst needs to be thoroughly mixed in. And in order to do this, I'm going to grip this uh, bucket with my feet, which looks kind of weird. Um, but uh, it's a very uh, good way of just keeping this bucket still while I'm trying to mix it. If you've got someone that can hold it for you, uh, that's great. But uh, I'm just kind of wedging it between my feet just to kind of stop it from moving whilst I use this piece of wood to stir it. And it's very important that you do stir it very well. Take your time um, and make sure you get right to the corners and to the bottom of the bucket because it's very easy to miss those corners. Once I'm done mixing, I leave the silicon to sit for about five minutes and allow the larger air bubbles to pop and rise. Um, if you have a degassing unit to degas your silicon, which is like a kind of a vacuum chamber, um, now's the time to use it. But uh, I don't, so uh, I haven't. So the head is laid on its back and it's on the floor. Um, so what I do is I pour it from high up. And by pouring it high up, it means I can I lift the bucket high up. I get a very thin stream of silicon and that just helps the bubbles kind of pop or the larger bubbles to pop. So you keep adding your silicon gradually, gradually, and you're filling up the void inside. Gravity's feeding the silicon down, and basically it's creeping around the space that where the clay had been. And now that there's obviously a space, so the silicon can flow throughout. Um, and gradually you're going to start seeing the little drill holes that you, you drilled. The air is going to come out, and then eventually the silicon will come through. Um, and this is known as bleeding uh, the holes, so you're letting the silicon bleed out. So it makes sense to block the lowest holes first, the ones nearest the ground, and work your way gradually upwards. That way you sort of ensure that you minimise how much air could get trapped. Okay, so that's all the silicon in. The mould is now filled. And I'm just going to kind of keep my eye on this mould for an hour or two just to make sure that there's nothing leaking anywhere. And uh, once I'm happy that the silicon isn't dropping anymore from the cup, um, then I'm just going to leave this overnight to cure. Okay, so the following morning, I checked that the... Uh, silicon is fully cured um, I sort of stick your finger in the top and just check that there's nothing that's unset and I just need to pop the pipe off the bracket and simply hitting this pipe uh, will lever it away quite nicely and it breaks the seal so carefully pull and flex the pipe away and you reveal the silicon inside this is easily sliced with a sharp blade just take care to not cut into the face be cautious leave some of it sticking out because you can always trim more off later Pliers make it much easier to pull the hot glue away from the edges. Once you get an edge up, it tends to pull away in bigger pieces. Carefully undo the bolts and undo the screws in the front halves. Leave the screws that are in the back half because this will help us when we come to open the mould. So using a big screwdriver or a pry bar, you want to lever the front half away from the back near the base where the screws are. So as the back is securely uh, screwed to the baseboard, the front should come away and move off. So slowly lever all the way around until you feel it free up and start to give. Now you can use a blade or scissors to trim off any excess silicon which has leaked into the seams and into the bleed holes. So now carefully peel the silicon off from the plaster head. The silicon's pretty robust and it's very flexible, so you can be quite brutal at this point to try and get it off, uh, you know, as is necessary to get it off. Now you're going to notice the ears are very thin and very undercut, so it's almost inevitable that they'll break off. It's not really an issue as we now have a mold of the complete head anyway, so we can make dozens more heads, but to get the pieces out, you can simply flex the mold and peel out the broken bits carefully. So in order to get the silicon back into its jacket, it's handy to apply a mixture of dishwashing soap and water onto the assembled front half. So I've bolted the two halves of mold together, 
the two of the, the front halves together and uh, like I say I'm just using this mixture all over on the inside and basically you can push the silicon back into place and this mixture lubricates the surface and allows it to pop back into all the places around the keys and everything um, you could use Vaseline for this it does work but the trouble with Vaseline it remains greasy forever and if you drop the mold half it just picks up all the dirt on the floor so it's nicer to use this because it just washes off with water and you can reactivate it with water as well so it's very important that you take care to ensure that all the keys are in place around the edge and check that the keys are lined up properly and, and feel everywhere on the inside just to check the silicon is sitting where it's supposed to if you find a spot where it moves as if there's like a space behind it then that means it's not located correctly you really need to push and wiggle the silicon until it slides into place and also remember to check the pore hole stump is located too that can act as a little key so there you have it the mold is finished and it's ready for work um, despite the two materials the fiberglass and the silicon being in the same mold you can see from the inside anything that's cast out from here is going to be an exact replica of the head um, there will be a very thin seam line around the outside edge but this is very easily cleaned off so there we have it the completed head mold for more details be sure to get your free download booklet by clicking on the link directly under this video or on my blog page thanks for watching